one word. Mm, uh, memorable. Um, I think we spent about two weeks in Tokyo itself and then a week in Hawaii beforehand. So pretty close to a month, yeah. And if I were to think about my favorite part, um, Tokyo itself was really, really cool and I loved the experience. So honestly, my favorite part was coming home and seeing my family because they couldn't be there. Um, it does, when you're there, it doesn't feel like the biggest stage because there was, there's no audience, there are no spectators. Um, you knew it was a big deal when we saw the camera situation. I mean, there was one under the bridge, there were drones, there were helicopters, so you knew it was a big deal. But honestly, it just felt like a regular regatta because like, nobody was there. <laughs> um, you know, maybe it's different for athletes from sports that are more closely followed, but for rowers, we don't really get that much media exposure. Um, not too many people know about our sport, so it's really nice because we put a lot of work into it. Um, and it's nice for people to see the, the fruits of all of that labor. And I hope people follow rowing more closely because it's a really fun sport and it's something that everybody can do. And if you don't know about it, you can't give it a try. So maybe more people find out about rowing. Um, we did a really good job acclimating to the heat. So we typically train in Princeton, New Jersey, and it's really hot and humid there. So actually the heat was fine. I think the hardest part for me was um, going into a race without having raced for two years. Uh, we really had no experience on the race course. And so that I think kind of played into our results a little bit. And I just, I wish we had more time as a boat to kind of gel together and figure out what it feels like to go down the race course. Um, I think that the biggest problem, yeah, was not being able, usually we go to a World Cup or two in the spring so we can kind of test out lineups and see how they work. Um, but I guess, you know, relative to other countries, the U.S. was in a really bad position in the summer and the fall. And so we were in small boats. We weren't really training together in boats, which um, I think there are pros and cons to. I actually think it really helped us. But we weren't together in team boats until December, which was unusual. But I think, yeah, if I were to reflect on how COVID impacted us the most, I think it's just not being able to compete. Uh, the cardboard beds are actually... Um, pretty nice actually the entire room was made out of cardboard so the walls and the doors so when we leave everything in the room leaves and it can be recycled so that's really cool the bed itself was structurally quite sound if you used it like a bed but I would always kind of flop in at the weakest point to go to my nightstand and I I broke it twice um, but they're interchangeable sections and as soon as I let somebody know that I broke it like immediately there was another section to you know come back in and so you know the beds were, they worked well. Um, I mean, it's really cool to be part of Team USA. We're not like the US rowing team. When we get there, when you walk around, people don't know what sport you do. They just know that you're Team USA and we've got a really big presence in the village. I think this is maybe the second largest team uh, for the United States ever at an Olympics. Um, we take up an entire building in the village. Like we're a pretty big group um, and so it's, it's nice to kind of ride elevators with athletes that you know and that you see on TV and they say, hey, how's it going? And I'm like, I don't know, Caleb Dressel, how are you doing? You know, things like that. And so if you're kind of teammates with these superstars and when you reflect on it, you're like, okay, maybe I'm a rowing superstar, but nobody, nobody really knows about it. <laughs> so the dining hall in the village was a multi-level building. Um, when you come in, you're greeted by these really, really friendly volunteers who check to make sure your mask is on and you hand sanitize. And then when you get in the dining hall, there are different sections for different parts of the world. So there's an Asia section. There was a, I think there was a, you know, a North American section, a halal section. And then there was a Japanese specific station, which was awesome because they had like sushi and miso soup. And I have no, I mean, the food was great. So that was like a highlight for me. <laughs> yeah, so it was pretty strict. So prior to getting into Tokyo, we had to present um, negative COVID tests, I think three days prior. So we were taking those in the hotel room in Hawaii. Then once we got to Tokyo, uh, we had to show them our test. We had to quarantine for, I think, a slight period of time. And then we downloaded an app on our phone that we had to report our symptoms every day and it tracked who we were close contacts with. So if your cell phones were close together and for, if you came down with COVID, they could see who you were near. So that was really helpful. And then every morning we did a PCR test. So I would say it was quite thorough, yeah. I mean, if I had to do it again, I'd win the race. <laughs> but, you know, that's over. Uh, if I had to pick my favorite part, I think it would just be making the team because I've worked so hard to get there. And so, yeah, just saying from, from now on that I'm an Olympian, that's a pretty big highlight for me. And it was worth it all. Ooh, stick with it.
That's what I would tell myself, stick with it. It feels good, he still has a silver medal, but maybe next time. <laughs> Are you going back 2024? Uh, I'd always intended to kind of be done with rowing and uh, I think I've told a few people if I never took another stroke, I'd be totally fine. So we'll see, I think Paris is only three years away. I'll stay in good shape, but you know, I've got a lot of other things I'm really excited to do and uh, we'll, you never know. So I'll just stay in good shape and we'll see.